Weight loss is difficult, very difficult. In fact, most people dislike diets and dieting. They find learning a new healthy lifestyle difficult because of all the new information and it's all very confusing. Let's do something about that right now. Welcome to Extra Mile Weight Loss Online Learning. I'm Peter Kenya and I'm a weight loss educator, which means I teach people the skills they need to eat well, lose weight and feel great about their new lifestyle. At Extra Mile, we are committed to helping you reach a long and prosperous life through the better understanding of health and nutrition. This outcome of optimal health is achieved through diet, education, exercise and supplements. And the emphasis here on the education. Extra Mile Weight Loss Education Program comes in three stages and the first two stages are free for you. Stage one is 12 free videos which is an introductory program to your lifestyle change. Stage two is also free and it's 90 free weight loss tips which come to you one a day for, for three months in the form of an email for your education progress. And you can set up your phone to receive your emails and this is your, your mobile classroom. But if you're not a go alone type of person, you need an extra help and stage three is for you. Where you enroll on a weight loss school with a 48 week program, which includes email tuition, uh, one weight loss, webinar a week which is on Tuesday mornings at nine o'clock and two members cons consultation or question sessions which are online which happen at Tuesday evening at seven o'clock and Thursday morning at nine o'clock. But let's move on now. Welcome to your 110 Steps Weight Loss Workshop and this week we're talking about the hocus pocus of nutrition labels. They're helping you to learn how to interpret nutrition labels while also looking at ways to reduce your fat intake in your diet. Before we go any further, let's just recap on last week's task. Now each week you undertake a new task to help you with your learning. So we're changing just one aspect of your lifestyle each week in this relation to your diet, so there's not too much to learn. So last week we were focusing on your daily fruit requirement, which was two to focus on achieving two or three serves of fruit per day, depending upon whether you're following the 1200, 1500 or 1800 calorie diet plan. It's two serves a day for the 1500 and 1200 calorie diet plan, three serves a day for the 1800 calorie diet plan. You uh, suggested that you introduce a new fruit or vegetable into your lifestyle each week. Now this was because we as humans being creatures of habit, we have a tendency of just eating the same old things over and over again. Third task was to maintain your knowledge on protein, restricted vegetables and unrestricted vegetables, which were the tasks from the previous three weeks. It's a accumulative learning, so you're only focusing on one thing at a time. Anyway, let's just move on. One of the most important skills you can learn, you can develop on your weight loss program, is to learn to read and interpret nutrition information panels or NIPs. Now, why do we have labels on packaged food? Now, labeling laws in Australia, they require most manufactured foods to display a nutritional information panel. A reliable panel display will show the serving size of the food plus the food calculated in 100 grams to help you with percentages. And you'll see the reason for that a little bit later. Labels allow you to compare similar foods to help make the best choices for you. How do you read these nutritional labels? Well, nutrition information panels show energy as kilojoules and calories. They show the macronutrients of food, your protein, your fiber, your fat, and your carbohydrates. And they show the serving size and the number of serves per package. But not all food require nutritional information panels. Foods that are exempt are foods that come in very small amounts like spices and herbs. Tea and coffee doesn't need a food label. One ingredient foods like fruit don't require food nutritional informational panels and foods sold at fundraisers like school fates and foods packaged at the point of sale don't require food labels. To lose body fat though you should look at kilojoules and calories on the label and the amount of macronutrient like protein that's in the food. The, the amount of fat per serve you should take note of. And the amount of fiber that's in the food. Fat by law must be just, must list the amount of saturated fat and trans fat in the food. Now carbohydrates must show the sugar that's in the food. There's also another panel that's on packaging. All the ingredients in the food is listed. Now, ingredients must be listed in decreasing amounts by weight. The ingredient listed first is the most abundant in the food, and other things that are listed are additives like food coloring, food flavoring, and any allergens that may be present in the food. But how much 
is the right amount. You're going to be reading the panels. How much is the right amount? Well, for fiber, we need 20 to 40 or 20 to 30 or 20 to 40 grams a day. And a high fiber food is three grams. So you're looking for three grams plus of fiber in the packaged food. Now, bear in mind that a, a fruit like an apple may have four grams of fiber. So three grams is not a great deal of fiber. So you're better off a lot of times grabbing a healthy apple than one of these other foods for fiber. Sodium is another thing you look at. Now, high sodium is 600 milligrams or a quarter of a teaspoon. Now, if you're shaking your salt shaker over your food and you're dumping this amount, a quarter of a teaspoon on your food, you're putting a heck of a lot of salt on your food. So, but on packaging, you look for less than 20 milligrams per 100 grams. Now, that's less than 0.02%. Sugar is another thing to look at. Um, high sugar count is 30 grams on the food. So you look for two grams or less per 100 grams. So less than 2% sugar is what you're looking for. And fat. Fat is the other thing we were concerned about. A high fat in a food is 20 grams. So you're looking for, uh, so look for three grams or less per 100 grams. That's 3%. And that's for your weight loss project. For a healthy fat, you'd want to come under 7% fat. But looking for 3% is a good way, place to be. On a weight reduction program, you want to identify fatty foods and reduce or eliminate them. Now, you eliminate the saturated fat on meat by removing the skin of chicken. Yes, you've got to remove the skin of chicken because that is where the most fat is on chicken. And you trim the fat from the steak and roast that you've cooked. Buy, you buy a more expensive cuts of meat that has less fat. Now, there's, there's pretty much no such thing as low-fat mince. But the more pink the mince, the more fat that's in it. The more red the mince, the less fat that's in it. So that's why the more red the mince is in the, in the supermarkets, the more expensive it is. It's, it has less fat. And the other thing you can do is learn to eat the correct portion size of the protein or the, the meat. And that's what we're concerned about here, serving sizes. So learn the serves, which you did in week one. So the strategies for reducing fat in the diet is use cooking spray instead of um, oil, liquid oils or hard fat for cooking. Or you can saute in wine or stock. You can trim the fat from meat, and we recommend that. Always trim the fat from meat and avoid fatty meats and foods. Now, there's no such thing as a low-fat salami or pepperoni. So you probably want to avoid those foods while you're on a weight reduction plan. When it comes to salads, flavour the foods with spices, herbs, lemon, garlic, etc., rather than oils and dressings. And when it comes to dessert at night, try sorbet or fruit for dessert rather than pastries or ice cream. Now, this week's task is about food labels. So I want you to focus on reading food labels. This is going to slow you down when you go through the shopping center. What I would like you to do this week is when you pick up the thing off the shelf, pick up the other brand beside it and look and compare the fat levels of these similar foods. And then look and compare the sugar levels of these similar foods and then see if you can make a better choice. So as I said, it's going to slow you down, but you may you learn to look at alternatives to what you, your habits keep you buying. We've got some time to spend, so let's go through the ABCs of weight loss. And this week we're up to M. M is for meals. There are only three of them a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And you shouldn't skip any of them because they are all important to a healthy lifestyle. Now, if you're trying to lose weight, you might want to spread your calories evenly over your meal. Now, we're using calories rather than kilojoules purely because the math is easier. On a 1,200-calorie diet plan, you have three meals at 400 calories each. 1500 calorie diet plan, you plan for three meals at 500 calories each. And on 1800 calorie diet plan, you plan for three meals at 600 calories each. Now, if you want to include two snacks a day, you must choose wisely because those extra calories must come from the main meals or they go on your hips. Okay, so you've got to adjust your 1200 calorie meal. So if you're fine 1200 calories, it's three by 300 calorie meals and two by 150 calorie snacks or thereabouts. So you see what's happening here? your snacks must come from your calorie count from your meals. 1,500 calories is now three by 400 calories and two 150 calorie snacks. At 1,800 calories is three by 500 calories but two by 150 calorie snacks. It's always better to choose healthy snacks that are low in calories and contribute to your overall serving requirement without buying your diet. And that's what I'm saying, you come back to fruit. But on our diet plan, we're more concerned with serving sizes. So let's plan our diet around servings rather than calories. A breakfast of two poached eggs on toast is two serves of protein and two serves of carbohydrates. Now, if you're thinking about fiber, 
your bread, your toast is the only place where you're going to get fiber. On white bread, it could be less than one gram per slice. On a better quality high fiber bread or a whole meal bread, you could be up to 2.4 grams per slice. So to increase fiber, choose a better bread. You can also increase fiber in this meal without reducing your protein intake by sub substituting an egg with a baked bean. So you would have one baked bean, one egg on two slices of high fiber toast. A lunch of salad and some form of protein can be one serve of protein and salad from your free vegetable list. We talked about that a couple of weeks ago. Always bear in mind too that the serve of protein doesn't have to be meat. It could be cheese, it could be an egg. Protein does not have to be meat based. And dinner can be three serves of protein, one serve of restricted vegetables, and more vegetables from your free vegetable list. So you see, we're trying to keep that fiber up and the three serves of protein. This is probably, probably a good place if you do enjoy a steak to have, uh, well, 135 gram piece of steak is three serves of protein. And your snacks can be two serves of fruit. So morning tea is a fruit, uh, afternoon tea is fruit. What you can do, if we can just go back to here, is you can, if you plan to have two serves of protein for dinner, you can then include one serve of protein for one of your snacks, so a fruit and cheese or a fruit and yogurt. Your diet record at the end of the day looks like this. You've end up with six serves of protein, two serves of fruit, restricted vegetables uh, have been one serve. You've had lots of salad or free vegetables and your fiber count is now up. To achieve any long-term success in weight loss, it's up to you. It is you who must learn the skills required. And those skills all relate to healthy eating. M is for meals. And all of them are important. Now, thanks for attending. But before you go, could you do me a favor? If you enjoyed this video, or if you know somebody who would benefit from being associating with this group, then hit that like button and tag them in the comments section below. Thanks very much.